What's up, YouTube? What's going on? My name is Rudy, and I want to talk a little bit about myself and uh, the tire shop business, a little bit about my tire shop. Um, so this tire shop has been here since 1978. My father started it. Uh, my father is the one that taught me everything I know about the tire shop business. Well, mostly everything. Um, and as a little kid, he would bring me down and he would show me, uh, you know, about hard work, worth ethic, and um, mainly to help out with cleaning and organizing as a kid. Um, but uh, as I grew older, that's when you really start, uh, you know, falling in love with the business and knowing uh, what to do to make money in the business and I know there's a lot of people that want to get into the tire shop business nearby here but also um, across country that uh, you know I want to talk a little bit about uh, the business uh, about the tire business so here we go I uh, I've been here my whole life I mean since I was born my my pops had this shop in the same location so um you know i've been in my this business whole, since i was a little kid and even till now as, a, as an adult uh, i've been here so i know a, a, a thing or two about the, the tire shop business and uh i want to share with you a, a lot of that inf information i learned throughout the years so that's what i'm gonna start uh doing this here uh, so when you want to start a business a, a tire shop business um, you know you want to first of all like get the location and get the machines and there have many people that have been asking me you know how does that work well you know if you're gonna get yourself a location it's going to be the cheapest route to uh, start a tire shop compared to if you want to buy a tire shop already running um, and I much prefer starting from zero from scratch in my opinion I, because of the reason that it's very, pretty cheap very cheap to start and um, you save a lot of that money from if you're going to buy a running shop it depends how much that shop is, but um, a lot of times they're, they're, you know, people want a lot from them. And, you know, it doesn't take that long to develop clientele compared to probably what most people think. Um, because this is a very needed business. So, I mean, you will get up there pretty quick with clientele if you start from scratch. So, and it's going to be a lot cheaper. Um, so... I, I would say my favorite thing to do is just start from scratch if you're going to start a shop. <clears throat> and the machines, like this one here, <clears throat> you can get them uh, used, which is uh, uh, rebuilt from, from companies that they make them uh, rebuilt. Um, and they, a lot of times they already have them in the shop ready to go. A lot of times they got to build it for you. But it's it's a pretty quick process. It's not like you gotta wait a few months to get yourself a, a used machine or used machines. So um, in this case, this this coats. Um, my favorite machine is this, is this exact one. This uh, seventy sixty five AX. Um, it's very reliable. It takes a beating. It's cheap to fix. It's all air. I prefer all air because uh, down the road it can be very expensive to to fix a electrical machine like this one right here. Um, this one's a half electric, half air. Electric where it spins, but air when it comes to uh, the you know uh, breaking the bead. Uh, and so this one's fully air when it spins, and I mean. You just gotta have a good air supply. You gotta have a lot of uh, air. And I'll show you right now in the back what I'm talking about. Um, if you want 
multiple machines with air, um, you gotta have a big supply, especially when you got all the cars rolling outside and semi trucks and all that. But a good source of air, you're gonna have no problems at all. And if you if you don't want to have a lot of air um, tanks and you don't want a lot of noise and all that, then you're you're better off going with an electrical machine. Um, I I only want one air tank, or my city only allows me for one air tank, or. <coughs> Well, this will be a good route, uh, but if you're good at having a good amount of space for compressors, uh, tanks, then um, I highly suggest going the air route. So now these, these right here are the balancing machines. I got two of the same uh, Coats XR 1800s. I had those many years, they work great. Um, and I have a third one that, uh, this is a brand new model that just came out recently, the 1300. Um, I like this one much more than these for the reason that it is faster and if it breaks down, parts are available because it's a newer model now. So um, I would like to, I recommend you know, if you can get a newer model, uh, coats, you're gonna suffer less with parts, and you're gonna be hitting out, getting out the cars faster. But uh, so, so you you really only need one balancing machine. Uh, most shops only have one balancing machine. I see uh, shops that I know um, that I, I know a lot of people in the business. Um, once you get to two, man, you're pumping out the cars pretty fast. That's why I got the second one years ago. I wanted to get the jobs done faster. But if you're able to get three, man, now you are fast. You are fast getting out these cars. Especially when I had like four people uh, on the car. It, the job gets done really fast. As in four workers on the car. So you can imagine if you have like Three, 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 four guys on on each machine, and then the fastest one gets, let's say, to this one, and then the other guys to get over there. While well, time the the fourth guy finishes his tire, the first guy is already off of the machine. Then we got the fourth guy on the machine, and the first one is already on the car bolting it on. So. A job can be done really fast for tires, which is, that's like the number one thing people like is speed. Of course they want the job done right, and of course it's gonna be done right, but people love speed when it comes to this business. It, especially here in LA County, especially in SoCal, you know, we're in the 626, San Gabriel Valley, but people love speed when it comes to, people are really busy, they have, very important jobs that they have like a 30 minute window. So if you can get them in and out at that time, man, they, they love you forever, man, I'm telling you. But um, yeah, we do all kinds of uh, types of different tires. For example, they've got drag radios right here. We got a lot of muscle cars that come here to the shop. Um, we got SUVs, we got Semi trucks that come. Um, we even have like little, um, the little, uh, what do we call the little go carts? Those little sand rails and the little, uh, all those little vehicles, the little small tires. We, we do those too. Um, a lot of people can't do those and we do them, you know. Um, but yeah, we do. The uh, the bobcats, we do the bobtails. Uh, all that, by the way, can be done really easy with a lot of power. When it uh, when it comes to the air, the air uh, pressure, and uh, like I was reckon, again, this is like the heart, the power plant is that the air. So if you have a lot of air, like I recommend having like 
two, three compressors or two, three tanks, then you can be really good with those big vehicles, those big uh, work vehicles. And, and you make good money on those trucks. A lot of times you change six tires on those trucks. Um, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. So, yeah, so um, I'm gonna walk to the back a little bit. Just get, I'm gonna get to this one spot I wanna show you guys. we do our patching right here patching's all day here at this shop but this is our back area where we have our inventory of our tires the used ones mainly so we have some new back here but mainly used we have them by by wheel sizes um, it makes it easy for our guys to find them if they're in the, if it's in the 17 section, you have a 17, you know what I mean? Instead of being all over the place. But I want to show you this right here. So I think this is a spot right here many years ago, but, um, you know, like I said, when my dad used to bring me down and for sure every every time I had a birthday, he would uh, bring me down and he would uh, take pictures of me in like a suit. But um, this right here is a place where I don't know if you can see it right there, but I believe this is a spot right here. We'll come down and take pictures of the kid on my birthdays. But yeah, so um, now that uh, that I'm much older and, and I know what really goes down in the, the business and how it really works, and um, you know, sharing with people and sharing with. Uh, other shop owners or people that work in the shops or I mean there's just so much business that is, you're not going to be missing out on it and which most people think that if I help this guy you know it's like I get nothing in return but he's going to make money and, and and so yeah that's that's the old uh, way of thinking nowadays now that you have the internet because there's so much business now you get on the internet and you get people from an hour two hours away coming to your shop to put tires on so uh you're not gonna miss anything by sharing info <laughs> uh when it comes to this business um by the way that's that's a, a reason i believe in my opinion that a lot of guys uh in the business that do really good they have a busy shop they don't share info because um they work really hard and they earned everything pretty much on their own in a way and no one helped them so why should I help you right that's that's the, the thinking but um, you know in, in so so in Cali in SoCal there's a huge amount of shops that the way it happened was you know we're, we're, we're Cali and you know Mexico's not that far and our parents came down and you know they want a better life so they start businesses and you know in Mexico there's a lot of uh, uh, you know repair tire repair and and so a lot of guys a lot of men came and started a, a tire shop well first they, they worked at a tire shop here and then they saved some money and then they opened up their own shop right so that's what my dad did he, he, he came here worked at like two shops or three shops and then save money and then open up the shop. Well, I'm Monty first and then out here. And he closed that money when he stayed here. But um, so that that was the pattern that would happen. So the, 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 they owned it for many years. They got older, they have kids. The kids got older. And then they started running, getting into the business and then like myself. And you know, now that they kept many years and then 
it's very profitable biz, profitable so they stayed and um and now they got better than parents and the parents got older and now it's the kids shops a lot of times um you know they they, they stick with the business and um so in in, in socal in la county uh and in orange county and these shops around here that uh that are run by young guys that's because the parents started it and they took over they bought the business from their parents um and they're really good at the business and now you see a lot of young guys with very successful businesses out here in uh in in cali but um a lot of those guys again they also work themselves really hard to learn how to run the business and and do all the little tricks and 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 earn profit and and they really like had a shot by their parents to say and they figured out themselves they made it happen and true no one no one uh taught them in certain ways like in myself i learned a lot of the white the white tires like this type of stuff how to make money from the white stuff you know go white i would say all the time and i got a ton of ton of muscle cars in here throughout the years and um you know it's it's very good it's very profitable and now it's like an ongoing thing they just come automatically the, the muscle car guys they just they know where to get their used tires and, and uh but i'm just one shop right but um yeah so i was saying like no one taught them so like they they have a feeling well you know no one taught me well why am i gonna teach you i don't even know you right um i don't talk to you about anything in a way but um that's that's it, it, it it's not gonna affect you with your business at all uh if you teach the next guy the next guy from three cities away or even the next door neighbor who, like they uh the the customers are gonna go to you because they like you the way you work they like what you have and by the way you can't have all the tires uh all the tire sizes i mean you can have all the tire sizes but then you sell it and they're gone and the other tire shop has them and so when you don't have them the other shop has them they're gonna go wherever they have it because they need the tires uh also let's go let's say that about google like the shops are on google or the shops are on yelp and the customers they call and they call do you have this size nope do you have this size nope and next shop do they have this size? yep okay well i'm gonna go there right so that also equals out the playing field for the tire shop even as a new tire shop if you're gonna enter and you have the sizes um, that they need they're gonna come to you um, because they have to if there no one has it available but you do then i mean they have kind of in a way no choice if they can't afford the new ones because nowadays especially now man these fucking tires are very very expensive uh compared to what they were two years ago before the pandemic uh it's and even if you try to buy them and they're not available um the, a lot of things are in a shortage and the tires included so the tire shortage right now as i'm making this video and <clears throat> there's a lot of there's a lot of tires i'm trying to buy that i can't that I used to sell a lot of. An example, 315, 3518, Toyota TQ. Um, nothing. There's nothing available. And that was one of my ones that I was always selling, selling, selling. And, I, you know, I haven't been able to get that tire for months. Um, but if someone out there has it, they're going to be selling that thing. And it, But it's just an example. Like, there's, I mean, there's a ton of sizes and ton of brands. and But that's just a small little example that... Uh, that I use that you know if I don't have it someone else is gonna have it they're gonna sell it and it is what it is like and it goes the same for you and if you have it you know they're gonna come to you because you have it and they need it and they can't get it anywhere else so um, so that's that's a good and a bad thing about it, the tire shop business that you know sometimes you have a tire that no one else has and it you can be, you know, signing a lot of that stuff. So that's a. So um, 
Yeah, so I want to walk this side a little bit. This is a. We have our 15s right here. Check it out. This is a good example of all the 15s. This rack. And so it makes you guys, uh, when you have employees, it makes you guys uh, find them easier. Uh, if if your guys come, uh, as in the workers, if your workers come and look for tire size for like 10 minutes, example, and they can't find it, and then they leave. Oh, I can't find it. We don't have it. And the customer goes to the next shop, and you lose out on that sale. But you do have it, but it was just in the wrong spot, let's say. And um, <clears throat> you know you lost your sale there, and oh well. But if you have it more organized, if you would have had the 15s in the 15 section and they look and then they find it oh here you go and then they go put on they sell it well and but let's just say you weren't there right because that's what happens sometimes you're not there and you can't really supervise them all the time well you made the sale and why it just took some time to organize so i'm big on organization even though it looks like a big old mess but um if i can at least get the 15th to the 15th an example section uh, then I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I, I live on the south. All right, we're pretty good now later on We can organize by size if possible. Just an example like in this rack right here All we have in this rack is 195 65 15s, which is a very common section uh, very common uh, size so That's if you have more time and you can get to it and organize by size like that That's even better but if you don't have that much time, then it, at least you have the 15 to the 15. That's good enough for the guys can lick themselves when it's time for them to look and find the tire. And so I want to show you the compressor area. This is what I was talking about. Uh, when I was talking about you need a lot of air, you want a lot of air. Well, this, uh, this is my setup. And so we have a full size air compressor with the motor, working motor. We have a full size air compressor and the motor, working motor. And we have this one right here, full size tank, but no motor to uh, pump it. So what I did is we connected all three together um, and it, used only for storage and we also did brand new wiring when we built it we redid, redid, redid it actually i redid this just to be on the safe side it's very important that your electric goes current because you don't want this thing to go up in flames and you have a huge fire and it's really hard to the firefighters take down the tires with the water to stop it because the tires and the tires they just keep burning and burning and burning uh, I had an ex uh, accident in the past no one was here but we had a our tire shop go up in flames and it was a pretty big fire and uh, and that's what happened so like, that's what I'm saying I know how it is so but it was again yeah, it was called a uh, problem is it wasn't this one but it was another spot of the shop but uh, after I, I just redid a lot of wiring, a lot of brand new, even though it costs a good amount of money to do it, it's very safe. And it's gonna avoid a lot of problems in the future. And let's say like these new lines, you're not gonna leak, right? For many years, uh, good quality stuff. So um, highly recommend, go, you're gonna do it brand new anyways. It's not gonna use used parts, right? So, but if you have a shop already, redo your electrical system. I'm telling you, you don't want that thing to go up in flames. <laughs> uh, especially like this stuff, see, there's oil on it sometimes. Uh, from the, from the, when it comes out. So that's highly flammable. So, but if you have a, a good uh, system, uh, I'm sorry, good electrical panels and brand, recent, newly done, then uh, you're not gonna have these problems of, of going, tire shell going up in flames. But back to the, the compressed soul. If you have a huge amount of air, a huge amount of air, and a huge amount of air, you're not gonna run out of air. If 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 they're running co consistently, when you when you're working out there, they turn on when they're supposed to turn on. When they get low, I think they turn on around uh, 90 psi when it drops. Right now it's like I run uh, 
145 or so. So once it drops at a certain pressure, then it'll turn on and work on its own. And so it just keeps going and going until it gets to that 150 or 145 and then it stops again. You're never gonna run out of air. Uh, it, it, let's say in this size shop, uh, maybe you have three, let's say, or even if it's a um, bigger shop, a little bit bigger um, and a lot of work, this is a ton of air. And to finish up the air, it's, it's a lot of air. You gotta be just spending outside, just wasting, just letting it go out or something. But you, you wanna have a lot of air, man. I, I can't stress how much the air is so important. Because you don't want to be working on the car and then uh, you have one tank or something and then you have to wait till the air compressor turns on and fill up again and the customer's just waiting there and um, I mean there's no point to that if you just you know do your job uh, in the beginning do it right and just set it up right and have a lot of air and now you don't got to wait for the air compressor to turn on and to do the job and all that. It's just, a waste of time so uh the air compressor they're gonna save you a lot of time uh especially when you're inflating tires you're inflating tires that need a lot of air just letting it go out if you have a a direct um fitting on the valve stem and you're blowing it with the the big yellow canister what they call it the blower or whatever they call it uh the cheetah um that you waste a lot of air so uh what if you almost got it but you start running out of air and then the air first compressors the air compression starts uh the airflow stops losing on the air you're not gonna be able to inflate that tire and then what happens you have to wait till that air pressure builds up again the customer just be waiting and uh, i mean i used to go through that years ago like 15 years ago or more when we had like two compressors uh, more, more. I've been like, man, a long time ago. We, it, when when we didn't have that set up right, we would have consistently wait for the air to go up, and it just makes you way slower. And like I said, the number one thing that people love is that speed. They love speed. They would just go and go and pump out the cars, pump out the cars, and pump out the cars when you got the whole parking lot packed and even cars waiting on the street for you. Cause they love your service so much because you do you, you just handle their, their job right the first time and uh they you know they'll be back for more and back for more and they tell their friends and family and then they have more cars and more cars and more um you know more business pretty much okay so uh so about the tire business back to the tire business um There's a lot of ways to get uh, your used tires. Um, and that's a lot of another, com another common question. How do you find your used tires? And how do you get sets? And where do you get them, right? And so let me explain to you how it works. Um, so with the used tires, you know, it, it's, a, it's only what's available. So it's not like a new tire warehouse type of business. You can, how much tires do you want of this size? Oh, give me 60 or 40, whatever. All right, here we go. Um, you, you, you go to a, a place or people come to you that has Oh, I have three of these, and I got one of these, and I got five of these, right? And, um, I mean, but you know they're good size, you take them, right? And now I only have three of these right here. Man, I need one more for a set, right? Well, the way it works is that until next time, you know that that fourth one comes in and now you have a set so you gotta hold them till next time pretty much or unless you know you just want to sell like that sell two to one guy keep the one for yourself until next time comes and then you get the other one now you have a pair again um and that's how it works if you, if, but my the way i do it is 
Uh, yeah, I like to buy a lot, a lot, a lot, because that's how the, the pairs come in, the sets come in. Um, you know, you have so much that you can just put to the side, it doesn't matter if it sells or not. And then later on, a month later, or two months, or six months later, whatever it is, you get the other one, and then you can sell that as a pair, and then it's highly profitable. Uh, because you can sell pairs for more than a single one, and you can sell a set or more than a pair so if you're collecting um pairs or singles or you just hold them because they haven't sold and then another two come in then you're able to um sell them for more than originally expected and then that's how you make good good amount of profit big profit is because you held on to it you saved it until the next two came in or the if you say the three until the one came in and you you know you made some good amount of profit just put it online and you sell it and then next so example if you have one of these which is very common you go you find one you got 295 35 20. you hold it i know it's very profitable it's mission it's very wanted tired by many car enthusiasts and then you got the other one that pops up oh see that different brand this is from one company and this is from another company see that now you put them together sell them make a good amount of profit and car guys are very happy they got a pair because they couldn't find it anywhere because it's a very hard size to find but you had it and so they come to you and uh, oh, I'm gonna be coming here next time because now you guys hooked me up and that was awesome man I love it and so uh, they come back and then they tell their friends oh hey by the way my friend has yeah he has a regular car you know Toyota Corolla how much for those tires oh, oh yeah you got those two oh yeah, yeah, yeah cool let's do it more profit right more sales but um but that's how it works with the tire uh that's just part of the way how it works so so there's gonna be a lot of guys that you got to uh network with you gotta meet and talk to and they're gonna hit you up you're gonna hit them up some guys that have that work sorry that work in a uh carmax right that, some guys that work in a dealer a bmw dealer there's some guys that are going to be working at a Ford dealer, Chevy dealer. And so uh, another one that works at an off-road, uh, forward parts uh, type of business uh, that do, do a bunch of all-terrains. So that all-terrain guy is going to get a lot of the same all-terrain tires. The BMW guy is going to get a lot of the run flats, those uh, very uh, expensive Pirellis and Michelins that are run flats. The Ford guy is going to get a lot of SUV ones that say the, that freaking uh, 245-6018 uh, Michelin that comes out a lot, right? Uh, the Chevy guy is going to bring a lot of those 265-65-18 uh, Goodyears, uh, a lot of the 20s, a Camaro 20s, the Corvette 20s, right? So you have a lot of different guys in different... Uh, that you network with then they come they sell to you they come sell to you and they're gonna want to sell to you i mean even if it's cheap 10 15 bucks a tire let's just say um because they know it's a guarantee you're gonna buy it from them i mean i don't gotta worry about finding a customer i just go if i have one tire two tires or 10 tires or 20 tires or 30 whatever i know this guy's gonna buy them all because he he needs that stuff and you're gonna buy them all because, an example, or the good ones, not the worn out ones, but because you need it, you know. And then next time he brings more and, oh, now I got a pair over here. And now I got a pair over here. And then you saw it, you saw it, and it's profit. And then the all trains come in, now you got these all trains and this size. And now you got the 35, 12, 50, 17s, the BFGs, right? You get two in and they get two more and they have set and then they'll sell sets fast. The sell, the sell, they sell fast, right? And um, so that's 
that's one way that's a big way to get used tires you got to network with people that work at places that they get them for free the boss gives them them to for free because they they you know they they want to help the employee out you know in any way they can so i don't want to need these i don't want to deal with this here you can have these oh, you can just come and sell them to you and then you get the same tires over and over and you get pair of sets and start making some big profit because of that but that's uh that takes networking and there's other ways uh so tire shop um warehouses the used tire shop warehouses uh, those guys are are guys that buy from a big huge company so here we go we have like this big huge company no, the normally this works that collects tires from all kinds of like discount tires good ears uh, we got firestone companies that just sell new and they those big companies come pick up all their junk used and new and I'm sorry all their junk good ones and used ones they're taken back to their spot they throw away the junk they keep the good ones they sell the good ones to tire wholesalers the used tire wholesalers and then we come in the tire shop guys to those used tire wholesalers and we buy them and so um, the good thing about those companies that you get to pick your own tires that's huge you get to pick your own tires uh, you don't want those, you don't want those, you don't want, but you want these, 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 these. Then, oh, now you match up more and more pairs, right? More sets, more profit for you, right? But um, they give you warranty, not only that. So if one, two comes out bad, three, five, whatever, you save them from next time, you give them those, they exchange to you, or they give you credit, dollar amount, and then you apply to a new batch of tires that you're gonna buy. And so you have warranty with these used tires, right? So you just stamp them like this. There's your warranty. It was bad. That's my mark. Give it to me back. I'll give you another one. And everybody's happy. I'm happy. He's happy. Uh, bad thing is uh, these, these tire companies you sell their tires, so they're more expensive, um, which is not really a big deal. Uh, they sound more, more expensive to you. And so that's kind of like the only bad part about it. You have to go physically go out there and choose your tires. You got to, uh, you know, it takes time, hour, many hours out of your day. So uh, the way I buy my tires is actually I do go that route. I go to the companies. I choose the tires I want. And then they deliver them to me. So I don't own a big truck. I don't have a big um, 16 foot truck, 20 foot truck that I use to pick up tires or that I go get my junk tires and I go uh, dispose my junk tires for the reason of that those big trucks are usually diesel. And those diesel have requirements here in the state of California that a certain amount of years, if it gets too old, you can't use it no more. I know the states is different. It, this, if I was in another state, I would probably do have a, a big truck. But in Cali, it's very expensive to maintain one of those trucks. And it's cheaper for me just to like pay someone to come pick up my junk, junk tires. Or in this case, I think I pay like $50 per truckload and big truck like a 26 foot truck to come deliver the tires from their warehouse to my warehouse so it's way cheaper for me to come and just pick my tires and them and and have a company pay pay them to pick up my junk tires um then if i own a truck which would be thousands of repairs down every year when i had a truck oh thousands of repairs every year and thousands and thousands and it's like Man, I, I did the math. I was like, and, and you know, registration fees and all that here in Cali. Uh, much way better off just having no truck. I don't got to do no maintenance. I don't got to pay no insurance. No DMV, big DMV registration at the end of the year. And just pay the guy 50 bucks to bring all the hundreds of tires I buy. Or pay the person who's going to throw in my junk tires 
to take hundreds of tires away on one pull and I'm good for a long time. Till next time, right? So uh, that's that's my take on the trucks. I don't I don't have a truck. I don't want a truck. Uh, I had trucks many years, but um, in this case nowadays, it's everybody has a truck out here. So I'll just pay them to use their truck, right? But uh, so back to the tires. So like I I buy them. I, I choose them. I have them here until the next one comes. Uh, next. But then you gotta understand too, you gotta understand like which one are the common ones, right? So let's say uh, this case, I'm 305, 30, 20. I see a Michelin. I buy it, I hold it, I know another one's gonna pop up. It's just gonna be there until another one pops up. And then when I get the other one, I'll be able to sell it as a pair and make a good amount of profit because even if you buy it at, uh, let's say 20 bucks for that one, let's say. But you can sell them for 150, 200 bucks for a pair. Uh, it, it's a big profit. It's a big profit margin. And how do you get those pairs in? How does that work? Well, that's how it works. You got to hold on to these tires until you get them next time. And then you pair them up and you sell them. And that's, that's you know, you can get your tires from everywhere. Like I was saying, back then I used to do the other method a lot, but uh, I got tired of like, Choosing some tires and they were no good, and then I'm stuck with the junk tires and I lose 100% of my profit. Uh, another way, I pay more, but I'm not stuck with the junk tires. So I'm not saying the other method is bad. It's also a great way because you can buy them cheaper. So if you do have some that are tires, you didn't see that one had a cut or whatever, it was junk. Well, it was still cheaper than buying these this amount of tires than buying that amount of tires because sometimes you get some big deals. Sometimes you get tires for five bucks and they're good. They're like really good. They just, guys that, they got to move them real fast. They pick them up, they have their truck. I got to get rid of them in 30 minutes. They'll sound to you five bucks and say, and you get some good tires. But it's rare that you find people like that. It's, let's say you have one or two guys that do it consistently, but that's it. I mean, you can't, you can't uh, rely on them to run a freaking super busy uh, shop with one of those guys. <laughs> You're getting one of those guys that, He's consistently bringing 30, 20 pair, uh, 20, 30, 20 tires at that time every two weeks or something like that. It's not gonna happen. Especially when you have a, a shop that's doing high volume tires, you need a lot of tires coming in and you need a ton of inventory. Keep moving it and keep moving it. It comes in and out, comes in and out. And um, you, you just, uh, you gotta get them in fast, so you need, a, that's another reason so um for me when i was getting the, the tires like uh, i was i had my truck I'll go pick them up here a few here a few there i go wrecking yards uh you know wrecking yards sell tires right you get 50 tires 70 tires uh but it'll take you like four hours three hours to choose them out let's say even though it's kind of close by by the, time, by the time you leave the shop and come back with the truck or other shops other tire shops they also want to sell you tires and um, again, you can get pretty good deals, a pretty good uh, quality. If other tire, have, tire shops have it, they're holding it for a reason and they want to sell them to you. Great. Um, you know, good sizes and good quality. But it would take five hours, six hours. So your day, your day is gone if you're going to go to one place pick up tires and that goes for anywhere um, and bring them back so even if you just leave the truck loaded and unload it the next day or whatever but it, you're only getting what two 200 tires or you know 150 or whatever it is in those cases um you and then you got to do it again next week because you didn't get enough you know so like and so then you go every week you're gonna have to go like every week to get tires because you got so much business and like so that that, that wasn't working for me because uh i i have other things to do you know <laughs> i got family i got other stuff other businesses or whatever but um that i don't have time to keep buying spend my time buying tires by the way you get better quality tires if you do that if you have time and you go and you pick them out and every week you're there or in different places you are gonna get better tires 
because you're consistently getting them, then if you're doing it like every two weeks, let's say how I do it, or every three weeks, or every month, but I get mass amount of tires, I get like, you know, 400 tires, you know, around that range every time in a way. Cause, it, Cause I I use, when I go, I go hit two spots up. I'll go one, I spend like two hours there picking, three hours, and I go to the other one, and then I spend five hours picking, four hours. There goes my day, yeah, my day is also wasted too, but I got in 600 tires, 700 tires at one time, right? In one shot. So, yeah, I spent the same day, the same amount of tower, hours, but I got in a lot more a lot more tires than I had my truck to go get tires, come back. It's a huge difference. And then they bring them, they have two trips or three trips they gotta do. That's their problem. Uh, you just paying for it but you don't gotta be spending time go bringing the tires out and all that I mean, so it depends i guess it depends more on what phase you're on with the business you know i used to be the other way when i had less work i had more time but as you get bigger you don't have that time that you can spend on buying tires so you gotta you know I guess go a different route, right? So, which is the route I'm going, it, it works really good for me. Uh, you, you, you spend your time, uh, yes, with that one day, picking out the tires, but um, that's it. You, you're good for like a month or three weeks or whatever, till next time. Uh, also, I wanna add to this. Once you have years buying with um, these, Tire used tire warehouse guys, they will um, know your style. Like. They, they know what you don't like. So most of these guys are smaller um, companies, by the way. They're you know eight people or less, two people, four people. So it's a very personal business. It's not a huge company that um, that don't know you, that don't know what you like. So. They will know what you like. So they will, um, so, sorry, so you will be able to just call them and say, hey, send me a truckload. You know what I like, send me a truckload. And so, okay, sounds good. You know, a few days later, they bring a truckload and then you can choose them out here in your spot. And the ones that you don't like, they take back. And even the junk ones that you have here, you, they return them with the junk ones and give you credit for them. So that is like the most ultimate way of buying tires, which I've been doing for a few, few years now. Now I can just call them up and say, hey, bring me what I like. And they bring them. And so, uh, yes, it is more effective that you go out there and choose them. Um, but if you have a guy, a person, a company that can do that for you, um, you're gonna save a ton of time. Because my, my, for me, um, I sometimes don't have time to even go choose tires like that. So a lot of times I've been like for months, just, hey, bring me tires, bring me, but getting more consistent. Every week sometimes getting a truck load in. Uh, so in the month, let's say in the month you have a good amount of uh, 500 tire range that if they came three, four times, the, the ones that you picked out, that I didn't even have to go physically go buy tires. Um, it's huge. It, you save a ton of time. That's like three days worth of work that you saved yourself. Now, can you rely on that your whole business? No, but. Can there be stretches of times you can do that? Yes. And that is is where, you know, you save a lot of, a lot, a lot of time. And um, and those guys love it too, because they, oh, yeah, you get a phone call and, you know, take them, you know, don't take, don't bring me nothing you don't like that. That's not no good though, because I'm not going to pay, take a whole bunch of these. That's time some guy, I told him, I guess he, he messed up. He got another guy to fill in the order. 
but she filled in a whole bunch like 200 tires of these like what the hell is this i ain't gonna take this he returned like 100 tires to take back man like he fucked up he knows what i like right but sometimes people get lazy too but that's rare most of the time uh the guys doing the work are the guys that know what you like but it, it, it could work is what i'm saying it works for me and um so that, the used tire but the used tires how do you get the sets in how you get the pairs in well that's how you do it you buy them you save them until you get the next one in and then you have a set do i sell them before yes i do i don't mind because i got so much business that like i want to keep the customers happy i just sell them sell them if it never just sometimes if i have three but i know i can get another ones I'm sorry, if I have four, but I know I can get more of the same ones and the guy wants one, I'm like, yeah, go ahead and break away the, the set. I know I can get more in a month or three weeks or whatever of the same one. So I'll, I will break up my sets. Um, you know, and, and so that's just the way I do it. I'm saying a lot of people do that. People just want to sell the set. Oh, I got myself 300 bucks. Yeah, I'm going to sell only for 300 bucks. Uh, for the customer, I'd rather wait two weeks for it instead of this guy that's here right next to me right now that wants one tire of these and can break up my set. Um, everybody's different, but I so I got so much tires coming in that I'm able to um, break up my sets and uh, and get it on later on, get the other one later on, and make the set again, right? So that guy's happy and I'm happy, right? So, um, but yeah, so the, you do have to hold on to tires a lot of times, so a long time. It could be a year till you get your next one. Um, sometimes, right? But, you know, sometimes you have one and they want that one. That's all they need is just one. I have three of those 225, 50, 17 Michelins, rough flat. And you have one there. And that's all you have. Perfect, man. I love you, man. Give me, give me that tire, man. I'll pay you and let me go on my way. I'm happy. So we have a huge amount of tires. Um, you're able to do many, many, multiple things. Um, so, um, you know, my thing is, yeah, you gotta spend a lot of money on tires and a lot, but you gotta go in deep, you know what I mean? You gotta go in deep in this business and to be, uh, have so much to offer to the customers because there's gonna be so much customers, so much people that Man, you're not gonna be able to help all of them out, but a lot of these people that are your main people, your main customers, you gotta keep them real super happy. Uh, even as like, well, a lot of the prices from sometimes on certain, not all the time, but on certain items, um, certain tires, certain labor or something, just to keep happy. But you know they're gonna be coming again next week or next two weeks or next three weeks, next month, over and over and over and over. So. Uh, that's how it is with me. I don't mind doing that, uh, which I do that all the time. Um, I got a lot of happy customers, and they recommend. By the way, they recommend more people and more people and more people, and I'm happy. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you you gotta hook them up, and they hook you up, and and uh, yeah, you're really good with that. So. So yeah, so that goes for the, the used tires. I want to talk a little bit about the new ones. A uh, little bit about the new ones. Um, you able to get as many as you want usually because there's huge amount of, huge amounts of warehouses and those warehouses have the same tires, right? Different prices. So the thing is, it's more expensive and people, they um sometimes they don't want to pay more expensive but if you have a clientele that will pay you over and over and over or multiple customers with the same tires then you can buy a lot of them and hold them and and not worry about the amounts of uh, inventory you're gonna have to keep consistently buying so at the rate i'm at nowadays I like to buy multiple of the same tires that I sell a lot um, and not worry about it until like a month from now, let's say in this case. 
the 225 70 19.5s and you see i have a lot in stock right so why do i do that they're very expensive tires a lot of times you can't get them for cheaper anywhere else so if i find a company that can tell me um this tire and multiples then what i do is i like to uh ask for a little discount hey i can get a lot of these tires can you lower the price a little bit and you're gonna sell them anyways so you're gonna win because you're gonna get even if you can get four dollars cheaper on each tire um that's that's a good uh savings for the reason of you're gonna get that customer's junk tire and throw it away so your negotiation skills i'm not saying this is negotiate on everything i'm just saying like on certain cases that you can get a tire that let's say a company that don't sell a lot of let's say but you sell a lot of you get a little bit of the discount and i mean that discount can help for paying for your customers junk tire to be disposed of um if that makes sense they you're gonna have to pay to throw away the customer's junk tire to somebody so that savings can pay for you throwing away that junk tire for, you can give them that discount or you can just save it and, and for yourself and just you know profit for yourself whatever you want to do but um, a lot of times let's say you can get a good deal and you can offer it a little bit more cheaper than anybody else and you get even more customers and um you can do it all over again next month buy another huge amount of uh the same size and so uh that's again i only do that for some tires very very few amount of tires like a handful of tires that i know i can sell a lot of that a discount will be a good um a, a good uh a good help for me um but if you see in this case if you see a good deal um of certain sizes that you know you're not going to be able to get down the line down the road but they're available now and you have the money to buy it uh, i say buy it because you're going to sell them anyways and you're going to need to buy more anyways so uh in this case the 205 6016 goodyear uh, i'm getting it kind of close to the price of a chinese tire and this is a usa tire right here so and i know these are not going to be uh, around forever these are going to be gone very soon they're not going to be available anymore and so i'll buy these right here um i'll save them and until they sell i just you know i can put them online or whatever and sell them faster but uh, I, the main point is that i'll get them for the almost the same price as a chinese tire or close to it and i can offer a brand name a tire made in usa for the price of the chinese tire or if you want to compare to any other brand you'd be way cheaper than any other brands um because you got a good saving on that tire you bought so i like to buy multiple tires uh, on the common size i don't want to keep buying over and over i used to be able i used to be buying over and over but now i i just like to buy a whole bunch of the same ones of the common ones that sell over and over and over is your bread and butter the ones that saw a lot the ones that saw over and over and over and over so I'll show you the goodies so like the 215 6016 right i got more up there right and we have um um somewhat the 205 65 if you get a good deal in this case i, I can get these for a good deal I buy them and just hold them because I sell them slowly but I'm able to save a lot or get a good profit when I do sell them because I had a, a opportunity to buy some good at good pricing so I bought them 
because uh, you know you can sell for again the same price as the Chinese time. So five fifty five sixteen. I sold a whole bunch of these. I don't have much of these left. Uh, at, my, at my storage, I do, but not here. But these are like bread and butter stuff daily. Um, but yeah, so the use the, the the new tires, you're always gonna be able to find the same stuff over and over. And they're gonna be always available for most for the most part uh, on, on on the average stuff on the average stuff. So um, you're gonna need a lot of different sizes, a, a lot of to keep in inventory that you know that's gonna sell or sells in your area. Um, so. Um, you're gonna be holding them and pretty much investing in the business, investing in your product, holding them so they sell. Uh, if you have good deals like this, I got a good deal, 195, 60, 15. Uh, I got some good deals on these, so I bought multiple. And when you sell, you sell for a regular price and you make a good amount of profit. Or you can sell for cheaper and sell them faster. Up to you. But, um, Lots of different brands because some people want better stuff, some people want cheaper stuff. So it depends what what uh what size. If it's a size that moves a lot, you can have multiple amounts of the of the same good stuff or the same inexpensive stuff, or both. And you'll be able to sell it no problem. And again, profit for for yourself. Because you gotta get a good amount of sales per day, per week. So any little thing that sells, it's, it's a help. Even if it's $5, $10, $15 sale, uh, labor, uh, in this case, an extra one use tire, and an extra one new tire, that brings in, let's say, 40 bucks. It's a, it's a good help. So the more tires that you have in stock, the better it is, in my opinion. That it's not gonna be getting in the way and you can walk around and, you know, pick them out and stuff. But, um, the more you have, the, so you're gonna have a lot of work to do. If you're selling, investing that in, you stay with no money, let's say, or, you know, however you wanna do it, but if you wanna grow, then you gotta choke yourself to grow. You gotta choke yourself to grow. So you buy it, you save it, and the sales, you keep it on the side. Uh, make more money, you buy it, you keep it on the side, and it's gonna sell. Um, you just keep doing that over and over and over. Yeah, you keep running out of money, or you have no money again, but, but then you find yourself with a huge amount of inventory. And then, you know, here and there, here and there, here and there, that. Oh, now that one sold, oh, now that one sold. And oh, if I didn't buy it, I wouldn't make this extra 150, 200 bucks or whatever it is. Um, you get it back by two month, two sets of tires now. Uh, depends on size, of course. Or the same size, but a different, um, um, What's up, YouTube? Uh, video is continuing from the last video. Uh, if you're just tuning in to this video, I recommend you watch the last one because this is a continuation of the last video. And uh, so I want to continue talking about the tire shop business. If you were uh, interested in thinking about starting your own tire shop, I know there's not a lot of information online about the tire shops. Uh, it's not, a, it's not a, I guess, a big topic. Um, when it comes to starting your own business. But uh, where I'm from, there's a lot of people that hit me up that want to go into the tire shop business and they just don't know where to look and or to, where, where, where do you start, or, you know. Um, so I just want to shed a little bit of light of, on that. I want to just uh, talk about this topic. Uh, I've been doing this since uh, I was a kid, as I said in my last video, that. Uh, that's all I've done, pretty much, mainly. Um, 
I also done many other things, but as my primary has been a tire shop owner. Um, uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, a lot of hours that you gotta be in it. Um, you can't really delegate the um, see the, the management part. I guess you can say like the uh, when, when 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 you're small is what I'm saying. When you're a small shop, it's mainly like yourself or a family member or or a business partner if that's the case uh, but you you really got to be there most of the time because there's lots of things that need to be done uh, or you can do yourself that saves you a lot of money or it makes you a lot of money um, but uh, so um, I guess when you uh, well I want to talk about once you're starting a business a shop uh, what, where should your time be spent on a lot of the time? Uh, I would say is, of course, at the shop fixing, arranging, um, talking to customers when they come in, but you're gonna have a lot of free time also when you're starting a shop. And I wanna say that if I were to start a shop all over again, it would be online sales uh, when you have free time you grab a set of four, let's say like these, 265, 60, 18, hand cook, uh, put your price, you take pictures, don't say you want to take as many pictures as possible, eight, 10, 20, whatever fits on that ad in multiple positions. I describe them real good. Um, and you post them. In total, that ad is gonna take you about 15 minutes. So it takes about 15 minutes to make an ad from start to finish. So you just base your work on that. If you want to do four ads, it's probably gonna take about an hour. Uh, some people can do it faster, some people do it slower. Um, but what I've seen on average, everybody takes 15 minutes to make an ad. You post it, leave it there. Uh, if it's a new tire, you can leave that ad, ad up when you sell it. Just buy more and keep it up. Buy more, keep, if you have used tires, you, you're gonna probably make the ad one time. Once it sells, you gotta take it down. Uh, if you have multiple of the same used, just leave it up, right? It's pretty simple. And so I, I would spend a lot of time on, well I did spend a lot of time on online sales. Um, high profits, um, so you, you spend a lot of time on it. Uh, low expenses because a lot of times that ad don't cost you anything to make uh, or free. Mostly, I've, I've never paid for any ads um, when it comes to selling used tires and new tires. Um, but it's really inexpensive slash free. And uh, you get great results. Because a lot of times the used tires is very expensive to ship. Um, so, you guys, you can ship on eBay and stuff, but mainly what everybody does is get on their offer up or their Craigslist or the Facebook marketplace, make ads, make ads, make ads, and just keep getting those customers in, selling them the tires, and they come to you, you don't go to them. Um, uh, if you wanna go to them, you go ahead and just take the tires, I guess, but it's too slow, to, in my opinion. You want a lot of people coming to your shop and just keep making those ads and you get great results. And uh, good thing about the business of making ads online is that you get a lot of business and you sell a lot and you make good profit. The bad thing is that uh, you don't really get any referrals from that. One out of 10 customers will give you a referral to their friend, family members. Uh, and that's about it on average. So every 10 customers you get, you're probably gonna get one repeat customer uh, or if you're lucky. But um, so that's the bad part. So it, it's, it's, I mean, it's great when you're starting off but once you already got the ball rolling, um, you probably wanna spend your time somewhere else, doing something else. Uh, unless you have like specific brands of tires that are specific uh, set or something that take a little while or to, to sell or like, you know, it's a size that's gonna be hard to sell. Um, you can put it up online and then you can get rid of it faster that way, uh, make some money. But other than that, uh, in the beginning, it will be a great way to start, get that money going to buy more tires, to get more inventory, to get more equipment, uh, to get more machines. Um, I mean, money is gonna be used all the time in the shop. 
this business tire shop business but uh if you're already in the business for a long time um you know you probably want to stick to uh the referrals you want to stick to more of uh handling what's coming in um focusing on the customers you have because they will bring you times 10 compared to like out of 10 backwards out of 10 one right but um I mean, but either way, it, it's, I don't say no to the online ad. I, I do them also when I got some time. I don't focus on it no more. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very powerful thing. So uh, I want to speak to about the, the patches, patching tires. Uh, a lot of times people have in mind that if they're going to go into the tire shop business, they can, you know, focus on a lot of times on the patching part, um, make money because like they, they you, you know, you spend a few cents for the materials, not even a dollar, let's say, and then you, you charge, let's say like an example, 15 bucks for a flower pair or more, 20, 25, whatever it is on the flower pair, right? Um, so that's like an everyday thing, patching. It's like, it, to me, it's a gateway of getting customers. Also an example of air pressure, checking your air pressure for free to the customers. It's a gateway to like bringing people in the, the, the doors and you know, you do a free service or you do a very inexpensive service. Um, but your goal is not to try to sell something there. It does happen by the way, a lot of times you can have someone come in just to put air and then you end up selling them two tires, one tire, four tires, whatever it is. But that's not really the goal. Uh, a lot of the times the goal is to have them in, let them get to know the shop, let them get to know you. Uh, now they know where to come if they have a flat, right? Now, oh, I, I know a shop down the street or, or I know a shop, you know, just not that far from here that can help you out with that. And then they refer people, even like people they don't even know they, they refer sometimes and they come in and buy tires and I mean, that's awesome. And it all becomes, you did like a very inexpensive service or a free service. Um, also like checking the TPMS uh, systems, that's free. I don't charge for that. Um, but they, when they have a problem with that, they come in and uh, hit you up. Hey, my sensor's broke. Can I have a sensor installed? How much does it charge? It charges this much. Oh, you just need four of them when you change. It's already an old car, you know, they're all, you know, really bad. Okay, let's do all of, all of them. So you do for big service you know, four, four new sensors and programming. Uh, all because you did that free check TPMS uh, system for their car. And, you know, again, that was a free service for them. And um, so those are more like uh, gateways. I, I would say that for people to come into your shop, for people to get to know your shop, um, they feel comfortable. They, they, they know they're not feeling pressure to buying. Um, and they want to refer everybody because if they weren't pressured then if they send their girlfriend wife sister daughter down they're not going to get pressured you know the big thing for women is they don't want to get pressured to to uh to commit to buy something so if you don't if you're a shop that does that that doesn't pressure them to and then then down the line when they're ready they buy oh they're super happy they're just going to refer more more business more you know more and more uh more people down here and um so I, I don't pressure people i mean i never did and it always worked very great it down the line is when they bring me like times 10 business and then you know then that's that's where you make your money not oh this guy needs a patch hey the tires bad let's make sell you four new ones like the big chains the big chains they try to sell you four right away for everything but uh, a lot of times people get mad on that and they, they just leave and never come back i mean everybody's different yeah you can get the sale from but that's one time sale a lot of times that's it you don't want to go back because they thought they got pressured but um yeah we want to think long term not right now you want to think long term business so uh that's that's another thing for the for what when you patch tires it's, it's not really like those 10 15 20 bucks whatever you charge to get those that money is which is like an all-day thing it's the easy part or labor you know labor all the time people bring their tires hey how much for the install 
we charge this much um cool let's do it um that that's good that's a good money maker too you charge a good amount for the for the labor but you know for the most part you're making money on the in my opinion in this type of business if you're a prepared tire shop it's gonna be on the used tires you know it's gonna be on the the new tires too you're gonna be able to good to sell them out sometimes i saw more new than used on that day but it's rare and i rather you know just um do what's natural whatever comes in and a lot of times it's the use a lot of people don't have money for the new and they need a shop like this hey i need some tires for my car i don't have enough money i don't have a lot of money and you know price of the used tires a lot of times like half price or less um it depends whatever you want to sell for but uh they 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 just prefer to get the use and it just a lot more business a lot just faster just more customers so um if, if you were thinking about opening a tire shop or you already you just started one and you need some guidance well uh, i would say focus on the used ones a lot focus on getting the used tires in you know getting those um pairs and sets making them making them with time just keep getting them in continue working save buy more and of course you need new ones too but um I would say focus on, you know, if you try to make as much money as possible in the shortest amount of time. I would say the, the answer is use tires a lot of times. The use, the use, the use, it just, it's hard to beat. It, I, that's what some people ask for. I mean, if it was the new tires, I would be focused on the new tires. I guess it depends on your area, but a purebred tire shop, if you're just living off the tire shop from just flat repairs, labors, used tires and new tires, then the used tires are where the money's at. Uh, later on, if you want to diverse into diverse get get into other businesses, uh, at your shop you can. Um, I do. I do other things too. Um, you don't need to do it. For many years, I didn't do anything but just tires at my shop, and um, it was more than enough business. More I was way busy and I didn't need anything but if you want if you have new um, new interests if you want additional cash flow extra cash flow you can add some other things into the business and let me go to the front and talk about extra things you can add um, to the business the first one I want to talk about is it's I, I could in my opinion, I consider it like a free franchise. Um, U-Haul, the U-Haul business, they have a great system. They have uh, an awesome, uh, an awesome way of making money for, for you. They, they have pretty much, a, it's commission based. Whatever you rent, they will, uh, you, you will, make, you will make your commission on each and every uh, rental and um, you don't got to fix anything for any truck you don't got to change oils or brakes none of that if you don't want to I think you can if you get, you get in touch with those management and they'll let you do things like I've, I've changed a couple tires on U-Hauls and stuff but for the most part it's just rentals rentals, rentals you can rent them out of state um, and right now in the pandemic time, it's very hard to to get out of uh, out of state rentals. Well, for me it is, but it's a lot of times it's gonna be in town, a local area. I mean, and, I mean whatever they want to do, as long as they pick it up from here and they drop it off. Uh, abrimos a mañana. Yeah. So if uh, you get you get the, the truck truck picking up here, they they drop it off here. They take two days, three days, whatever, five days. Um, that's an in town, and that's that's a lot of uh, a lot of business. I I, I get I mean, just from one truck. I wish I could get more trucks, but I can't right now. Again, the pandemic time. There's there's a huge truck shortage, but I do an average about 
six, eight rentals a week. Um, that is uh, it's just from in towns. Once in a while, I get a a far one, like I did one like yesterday that w went to like Texas or something. But for the most part, it's just gonna be the in towns. Before the pandemic, now before I was getting uh, like let's say like three more trucks, and I was having a lot of more business than what I, and a lot more profit than what I am now. Uh, because I was able to get those uh, out of state, out of uh, out of town rentals. So, um, but the point is, like, if you add this, just an example, if you add something like a U-Haul to your business, uh, it's not going to cost you anything, and uh, you're going to just uh, make profit every week, every month, and um, it's it's something that uh, that's awesome for your business. Another thing I do on the side. Um, it, now I, did, I do this on my own, but I do a limo service. Uh, I get, I got two limos right now. It's just this one here, the other one, is, I don't have it here, but I have two, that one's a, a big white excursion, eight, fits 18 people. This one fits um, 10 people. But when, when the, you have so much business, customers, they, uh, they, get, they know you already, they already trust you, they like you. So if you add additional services, um, they will be happy to rent for me. For example, like people see the limo and they're like, hey, how much for the limo service? And then tell them your price. And, oh, yeah, I'll keep it in mind. Sounds good. And then later on down the line, uh, they have an event coming and they're like, oh, yeah, hey, I want to I wanna rent your limo. How much? Uh, we pick them up. We drop them off. Um, whatever they want to do, they get to the drink in the back, party in the back. But they you know they they rented four hours six hours seven hours whatever it is ten hours had a ten hour job this weekend um but you can add that to your business just an example but you know you take that tire shop money you buy something you make cash flow right take the tire shop money buy the other the other limo let's say you make cash flow so that's a service that um that i do with the with the shop also uh, but uh, another thing what i do is uh the tpms programmer uh the tpms scanner um you know goes hand in hand with the shop um so there's companies that have this system that you can uh buy a certain amount of sensors and they'll actually give you the scanner Show you here what it looks like this scanner here is a money maker i mean you 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 already have the tires off you just add these sensors and they're in here and then you program them with the machine and then you you program it onto the car and then you're able to um you know charge an additional service of what you're already doing so the tpms system is a great way to uh increase your your um your profits your business um again this this was really cheap and this right away you can get your money back in a month i did and um it's it's just you know money every month right so you, you also can uh do uh add welding to your shop it, it goes hand in hand again with the business so what happens is that companies they stock from stock from the dealer let's say chevy they put wheel locks on their car and people can't um people lose their locks sometimes so they can't take off their tire unless they have a lock or unless you break it off and so what happens is that let's say there's five right it's a five volt one of them is a lock and um they don't have the lock and they came for four new tires and they didn't know they didn't have the lock and they come and they say hey i want four new tires let's do it all right cool you get to the car and you see oh there's a lock oh i don't know that i don't know that oh man uh how can you take it off well you have 
-hmm. You get another one. You put it next to theirs, on top of theirs, and then you weld around it. You weld around it, and now you just get your regular socket and just take it off with the gun, and it comes off. So you weld it, and then you just take your gun, just take it off. So I charge, let's say 15 bucks each one to take off each lock. Um, bring out, the, I mean, you can do that also with the, with the wheel lock remover, you hammer it on, it gets stuck, and then I'll show you it. And then you take it off. So that's a necessity tool actually for the shop. But a lot of times it, it's one of those locks that's round on the edges. It doesn't grip right and you can't really take it off. So if it was like that one I just showed you right now, this, this one would work fine. But if it's one of those round ones at the edges, this thing would just slip off. And then you need to weld it. And then you charge the 15 bucks each, each one to take off. So that's another thing you can add to the business um, that will make you additional money every month. Uh, mechanic work of course everybody likes to add mechanic work to their shop and um, let me take it over right here you have extra space you know, extra cars you can put in and uh, do some work for additional income a lot of people already come to this business knowing how to um do work so they just get to work and that's it but if you are not know how to do work you can learn here at your own shop and uh and make additional income um so yeah there's a lot of brakes you know shocks and all that a lot of people just focus on brake shocks alignment and tires um you can learn that as you're in the shop you can you can uh, hire an additional guy just to do it for you but um, that that business is also very good for the tire shop business um, yeah I like to focus on uh, just myself I like just the tire business only just get more and more tires as possible um, and Whenever things pop up on the side, I do it. Let's say like the carpet cleaning business. Um, you can also get into that. Uh, let me show it to you. It's called a carpet extractor. So, a lot of these things also is for you, you yourself to save on, save on money yourself. Just an example, and this, this right here, this machine, This is a Calyx C2000. This is a carpet extractor. Uh, the hoses and the wand and all that's in the shop. But um, this machine right here, you can use to clean carpets. It works very, very, very good. Um, you can charge a good amount of money for it. Um, but mainly I use it for my own stuff, my own cars, my family's cars or couches. You can take it to your house and um, you know, but I mean, I've done a lot of work with it also. It works good and people are very happy with the results and you yourself can save a lot of money. So the tire shop also can, you can have things here that will save you a lot of money. Uh, do your own um, brakes and your own mechanic work. I saw in the front, we do a lot of our cars. We do our own stuff for our cars. Uh, that Corvette is not mine, by the way, but when, when we have issues, we can, you know, Put on jack stands and take it off. Take, let's say the starter, whatever it is, is wrong with your car, and save your save your uh, save your money there. But uh, you you do a lot. You do have a lot of uh, options when you're on the tire shop to have uh, additional savings. Uh, do things for yourself to save some money. Now, I love the used tire uh, semi truck tire business. Um, it's a whole other game when it comes to the. The, the, the car tires and but it's very similar that uh, you can make big big amounts of profit on each tire uh, a lot of, a lot of shops don't do semi truck tires um, 
you know, I would say if you have the space, do it. It's just another extra uh, thicker one inch gun, uh, one inch hose, um, and you get uh, the air jacks, the real heavy duty ones, and you get your bars to dismount on the floor, dismount and mount on the floor, and uh, that's pretty much it. It's, it's not really much difference. It's a whole different business, but it's uh, it's very it ties into a lot of what, what we do. Um, the the semi truck tires, it's it's a uh, you also new ones. You have a new, the stock ones in the, you have new ones in stock, and and uh, a lot of those guys they, they just need a tire, they just do it. I mean I don't I don't really care what brand it is. I need it now like my tire. I need to get back to work because I get paid big time on these loads. So I need whatever it is. Let's do it. I'll pay it. So they um. They are very profitable because they're they're mainly for business. So they're they're all about business pretty much. So I like to carry a lot of tires in stock. There's four main sizes. I don't, I don't want to go into now, but there's four main sizes that all those trucks on the road you see. They they. They only use about four. It's very simple. It's pretty much get the used tires, get the big gun, get the the one it shows. You already have a lot of air. Um, just do it. Why not? Uh, just, a lot of people don't want to do it, and I talk to a lot of owners and a lot of you know. I mean, it's up to them. But if you have the the chance, the option to do it, you have the space to do it then uh you can make huge money just on the, the trucks alone um so i will say i want to show you the gun this is pretty much the gun right here and we got our sockets in here multiple sizes so it's a very good business also If you have the ability to have enough space to put in a big tank like this one, uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend, first of all, the semi-truck tires fit in this. And a lot of shops don't have the space to put in a big tank like this. Uh, or they, they, you know, they just dunk it sideways. But if you can lay it down in, in the tank, it's, uh, it's a huge advantage. You're gonna be able to find the leaks faster uh that you might possibly miss if you had it just standing up so uh also you can do like two two tires of two car tires at a time if two people are here you have uh two two car tires in there at a time it makes the job faster uh, but this this is pretty much the only way to check tires uh how to like um well not the, the only way but you you can also get a, a spray bottle and spray the the soap all around the soap and water all around the tire like roll service people do but uh at, on the shop you, you know you, you can just have one tank change the water every week or so um just get them in and out get them in and out and uh, a big tank will save you a lot of time um it can save you some money too if you keep putting uh, you know in the spray bottle you keep putting soap and soap it's not much but I mean, you'll save some money there too, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a big help. This is a patching area, you know, it's pretty simple. It's like any other shop. You have your area where you patch, your tools, um, the spreader to open up the tire. You got another spreader here, your rubber cleaner, a rubber prep, I'm sorry, blue. Um, so you don't need a big area when it comes to patching. You can even do it on your machine outside and inside, but we like to keep it out in the open for like, you know, the dust, it goes all over the place. So I'd rather let the dust come out of here than continue to keep cleaning, clean on the inside every time you patch a tire on near your machine. But um, I like to have a lot of hoses throughout the shop. A lot of connections. You see the hoses are everywhere. 
I keep going down that way. There's more hoses, more hoses. Um, for whatever you park the cars, just reach real quick and you get to, you get to different spots of the shop real fast. And they don't gotta keep moving the car; they can just stay there. You bring out multiple jacks. Uh, you know, we use a lot of Harbor Freight jacks, the four tons. They're dependable, and they have a great warranty. So anytime you have a jack that goes out, you can return it to Harbor Freight and buy another warranty and you warranty another one. So they have a great warranty system. If it goes out within a year, um, you can return it. Um, and they will pretty much not ask you many questions about it, they'll just give it to you. So I like the Harbor Freight four tons. It's the type of jacks I use. Um, great, great warranty. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much for now. Um, let me know what you think of the videos. Comment, like, share. Thank you.